Okay, in this video, we're on the second video to make a straight line graph for the experiment in level 3 physics that looks like this. So, we've already made our Excel data table. Here it is right here. And the goal is to make a graph. Now, when we make the graph, we go through these processes here. Now, hopefully this video will explain all of this. You can play it a few times and you can get proficient in making a graph now. Warning, this is only an achievement level graph. There'll be another video to explain how to add these things called error bars that you need for a merit level graph. So here we go. In Excel, Excel's presettings work like this. The first column of data will be the horizontal axis. The second column of data will be the vertical axis. Now you can change that, but it's a lot easier if you already know. So that here we go. When we insert a scatter graph, and you select the first possibility, there it is. There's our graph. Now it doesn't look like we want it to look, but there's the graph. Along the bottom, we have 0 to 3, which corresponds to the centripetal force numbers. Along the vertical, we have 0 to about 0.7, which corresponds to 1 over the period squared. Here we go. Personally, make the whole thing larger. Maximize it to the entire window so you can get the best out of this. We can delete that little thing. We don't need that. But we do need, going back to our checklist, to turn the grid lines on. So, how we turn the grid lines on is you go to Layout under Chart Tools, and you find Grid Lines, and you basically just turn on the minor grid lines. You also go to Vertical, and you turn on the minor grid lines. So, that's the first thing done. Now, back to our checklist. We also have to trim the axes to spread the data. If you double-click on the horizontal axis, these come up. Basically, what we can do with this set of data is we can set the minimum, not at zero, but instead we can set the minimum at 0 0.9. For the maximum, what we can do is we can set it instead of, we can just leave it at 2.9 instead of 3. The 2.9 is already there, but if we just change it, it's 2.9 and close. Now our dots are spread much farther apart, and we've included all our dots. The other, what we can also do while we're in the same menu is you can right-click on this and format the axis. So you select this, you right-click, and you can format the axis, and this window pops up again. And what we can do is we can select the number. Now we don't need three decimal places with all of this business. We pretty much only need one decimal place with all of this. If we close that, all that's done is this right here. Alrighty? So, for the vertical axis, if we just select the vertical axis and we double click, this window pops up. Now to trim this, what we have is we can go from 0 0.2 
symbol, 1 over big T, little arrow, squared, and you can give it some units, 1 over seconds, little arrow, squared. And there it is. So, now we have both axis titles, we're ready for a title for a whole graph. Now that's called chart title. Chart title above the chart, there it is there. Now what you can do is you can type in in here something that explains the vertical, so inverse of average period squared versus the horizontal. set up for landscape, but you might have to change that to landscape, because sometimes it prints out portrait and you want the largest graph possible, so there it is. The last thing you would do after the printout is to select two dots and draw an error line. This graph is the linear graph, here's your equation, and this with an error line is set up to get you an achieved. 